Brent and Ryan in the morning. Good morning, I'm Brent. And I'm Ryan. And this is Brent and Ryan in the morning. And welcome. Hey, it's uh, Tuesday, April 2nd. So can you believe it's April? We're into April. <laughs> oh my Short gosh. sleeves. Uh, very Gonna nice. Going the 60s today. Uh, hopefully. Very, hopefully. We hope so. That's right. Oh my goodness. We can't believe it's April, but that just means we're getting closer to Easter, yeah. which is right around the corner, and we're getting closer to finishing our immersed Bible reading through the New Testament. And if you're still with us, and thanks for hanging in there with us. Way to go. Keep going. And uh, we hope these videos have been encouraging to you. You know, as we kick off this week, we jump into one of the new letters this yeah. week and uh, jump right into James. And James is uh, very interesting, right? Yeah, it's very different. I, uh, it's compared to the Proverbs of the Old Testament, Correct, yeah. because that's how I think of things. <laughs> uh, you, Mr. Pragmatic, Practical, you love this book as well. Oh my goodness. Is, is there anything more practical than this book? I mean, there's just a lot of verses that you can just pick out and memorize and use. And as I read through it, though, I thought, man... How different would it be if today's culture would really kind of latch on to James? Just even that whole, you know, be quick to listen and slow to speak and slow to get angry. I mean, that would basically put Twitter out of business. <laughs> it transform our relationship. Yes, it would. It's um, <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> So all this talk that we have about practical living yeah. is really pointing us to how we can live a righteous, obedient life. Right. And some people like to just always point and say, well, it's not about your works. It's not about yeah. obedience. It's all about faith. Oh, believe, it's just in my heart. Believe, I believe, believe in my heart. And that's and enough, it, right? Yeah. That's, that's it. There are a ton of verses that say if you believe. We just talked about it last week right, in, Hebrews. in Hebrews. If you believe. That's how you receive yeah. your salvation. And it's coming up again in John because Jesus says that. Believe. Right. right. But, but there's something different about this, yeah. right? What does James tell us here? Well, I mean, the thing is, is that we just have to know that anytime I think we would want to just latch onto this, oh, just believe, that's an excuse. Right. We're looking, we're, what we're really asking for is what's the minimum that I can get away with and still be good with God? Yeah. Right? I mean, that's essentially how I would interpret it because James is so clear. My brother James here, way to go. I mean, he's just like, look, if you say you have faith and you don't live it out, you don't have faith. Right. It's not real because a faith and a belief that is truly real will manifest itself in the way we live. Yep. There's just no way for us not to experience that. Yep. Faith without action is dead. Is dead and worthless. No yeah. kidding. And so that's just one of the, that's the main bottom line we have to take away from James. He's telling us how to live right. because... If you say, well, I believe, but my life doesn't right. line up with this and I don't actually put any of it to practice, he would say, I don't know if you actually have faith. Well, and he, he would even say, oh, you believe? Nice job. Even the demons believe. <laughs> Yeah, that's kind you of know, put down. I mean, it really is. It's kind of snarky and something I would say. So that's yeah. why I like this book. Yeah. There's something else, though, I like about this book. And I'm going to just, I'm going to get my pad here ready okay. because, you know, at the end of the book, uh, the letter, James says something very important. He says, confess your sins to one another. So, Ryan, go ahead. I thought bad about my boss this morning. Okay. <laughs> okay. Anything else? No. No. You know, there is something significant here, I think, that, that our, our, our church culture pushes yeah. against. Oh, I can't talk about my sin. I can't talk about anything like that. And James really kind of says there's power yeah. in confession. And I wonder how often do we struggle with things only because of our pride that mm -hmm. prevents us from being willing to confess to right. one another. And I'm, not, I, I'm, I'm pointing the finger at me as much as anybody there, but there is a powerful statement that James makes at the end of his book. So if you've been sinning, you can text that to 515-422. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. I don't want that. I don't want that. No, but find a, find a trusted source. Find and and it doesn't have to be us. We're no. not Catholic. No, You've not at got all. somebody in your life that you should be able to trust. Yes. And run this journey of faith alongside, and that's the person that you should be trusting. And it's not about. so they can okay. beat you up or knock you down, but they can lift you up mm -hmm. and encourage you and hold you accountable so that you have somebody there. So anyway, so James, very practical. If you're looking for verses to memorize, man, oh. chalk full of them. But then this week or the last day, we've also jumped to John, right. which is our fourth, <clears throat> excuse me, our fourth gospel. And it's kind of yeah. significant to point out that the John we're talking about, even though, or who wrote it, even though we're talking about a John in the book, there are two different Johns, yeah. right? Yeah, we've got, <laughs> this is the first one that really lays out a ton about John the Baptist. Yeah. Uh, and this 
crazy epilogue about Jesus. Yeah. The, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word yeah. was with God. Very different God. beginning than any of the other Gospels. Totally unlike Which leads Gospels. to an important point. The other three Gospels, there's a special word that's called yeah. the Synoptic Gospels. That's right. Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And that's because those three line up so closely yeah. together. But then John certainly sits outside those three yeah. as its own well, look. And here's an interesting thing we haven't talked about. The reason they're so different, part of it is, those three were written in a very close proximity yeah. in time to one yeah. another. John, it was much later in life, and people were kind of asking him, hey, will yeah. you put some of your input into this? And so he kind of yeah. came along and decided to write a book that filled in gaps that right. weren't necessary. Well, and it's interesting you say that because not in today's reading, but later this week we'll talk about it where, you know, it's funny if you read, I read ahead a little bit, John, actually, there's some parenthetical phrases where yeah. there's one point it's like he's kind of correcting Jesus in what he says, and but he does. He kind of adds yeah. his own notes in yeah. there as, oh, this happened, oh, but also, you know, you should know this on yeah. the side. So it is kind of important to know, right. but it's a very different perspective, but still gives us a great look at who Jesus is. But yeah. he but in bringing kind of a different look, he certainly highlights some themes mm -hmm. that we see very clearly for the first time. And you yeah. were mentioning one. The, the first one is the light and dark yeah. motif. It's a fancy word for theme. <laughs> no. But he talks about how lightness broke into the dark. And then there, it comes back again right. towards the end of the reading for today that you'll be reading. And so we just, John often uses imagery right. to describe the work of the Messiah, right. Jesus, coming to this earth. Right. Um, I did realize we started talking about the two different Johns, and then I... Oh, you didn't, tell, you didn't tell us who it was. It's John the Baptist <laughs> early on, and then John the disciple of Jesus. And John the disciple of Jesus is the guy who wrote yeah. this letter. Sorry, that I didn't want to leave that hanging too long. <laughs> That's funny. But back to dark and light. You know, you do see that theme... John clearly says, you know, the light coming came into the world and the darkness did not yeah. overcome it. You see Nicodemus coming to talk to yeah. Jesus at night right. under the cover of dark. So, I mean, as you read through John, make sure you notice that theme because it's certainly there. Yeah. So, excellent. So, we're starting John. We're going to keep reading through John. John's a long one. Mm -hmm. So, we'll pick up about midway through John later this week on our Friday video and then finish it next week. So, uh, all right, let's keep going. Uh, who have you invited? Have you invited anybody to Easter yet, Ryan? Oh, so. The, I, I need I, friends outside of the <laughs> church. <laughs> He's invited me. I'm planning to be <laughs> here. So there you go. Mark that one down. No, I've actually got a couple of cards in my car now of people Perfect. that I'm planning to, to invite this week. And, you know, it's a good reminder. You come in on Sunday, you see those cards on the pews, and you think, why are they wasting all this paper? It's just a constant reminder. Who are you inviting? Who will you speak to? Who will you bring with you on Easter Sunday so that they have the opportunity to hear about this Jesus that John is writing about because he really does change lives and can take people from the darkness and bring them into the light. So I hope you're inviting somebody. This Even if you don't go to Ashworth, you can invite somebody to your church. Oh, please right do. <laughs> That's right. Please do because people are open at Easter to go to church. Hey, this has been another fun episode. It has been. It has been. Hey, thanks for being with us, and we'll see you guys later.